Hello and welcome to the Tarkus Zone. Thank you for joining me. Today we're going to be talking about the game Ars Notoria. I've been looking forward to this game's release for a long time now. I've been doing videos on my YouTube channel for months now on this game. And you can look at the playlist for Ars Notoria if you wish. I'm not going to go over the nuts and bolts about what the game's about. Only to say that I am very excited about the game. And you can look at the nuts and bolts of this game in my other videos, but today I'm going to be talking about their playtest and their upcoming playtest. And that I think that if you're into building mechanics, uh, NPC management, like city building management, uh, going out and just grinding monsters, I think this game's going to be for you. I mean, I've been, out of all the games I've been really looking forward to between... Uh, my VR headset to platform uh, games to console games. This game has been like at the top of my list. So let me just bring over the Discord information. I am actually in the uh, fan art section. Let me uh, go up to uh, or down to playtest info. And I'm just going to go to the top of here. And I'm just going to kind of cherry pick what we need to know here. It looks like it's going to be a free open beta test of the game that will be running for a few months before the early access launch. Anyone who wants to participate will be able to do so from the game's Steam page. Well, we were just on the Steam page and there's no link yet for this play test. So I'm thinking they're just giving us the FYI that one's coming out because I'm on the Steam page right here and there's no little button because Tarkus would be like on that right now, uh, pushing that button to... Uh, to get the uh, the play test running, let me bring up the uh, Discord again here. Uh, so the play test will be available on the Steam page. There's going to be a couple stages here. The, the play test will be divided into three stages, and will unlock more content as the testing goes on. This is done simply for the testing process. Obviously, if you know anything about my channel, I do game testing all the time for companies. I know what they mean about these little stages you got to go through. Uh, when you release, you know, a little bit of the game and then you make sure that's turning correct, correctly and then a little, a little bit more and how multiplayer interacts, how NPCs interact, how uh, modeling interacts. Usually get that, um, uh, those kind of errors or those kind of complications with the game early on. So, the, you know, your, your playtesters can go out and tell the developer, oh, we found all this in 24 hours. And, and if you know anything about my channel, I find stuff quick. And what's nice about me is I normally can tell a developer what the resolution might be to fix it, depending on what kind of scripting, you know, what they're, what, what they're doing behind the scenes. Uh, you know, my background is I used to build worlds, uh, a little bit of, uh, did a little bit of coding for Paramount Pictures for Starfleet Command Series, did a lot of stuff for Barlow's Gate back in the day. But now I'm in like playtest mode. I like just going into games, taking them apart surgically, figuring out what's going on, making sure things are working the way they're supposed to be working. So this is good to see that they're going to be into stages. So the stage one is going to be, it looks like around the tutorial, there are 10 tutorial quests that you're going to need to learn the mechanics of the game. Uh, it's got uh, generated dungeons. Um, so the dungeons look like they're going to be different depending on what kind of world you load up. I imagine what happens with this game is it just generates a, a world uh, with NPC management and then you just work that world. So I'm thinking when it says procedurally generated dungeons, I'm assuming that's on day one that happens. It might happen that if there's a threshold you got to go through, like a doorway, that it would do it at that time, give you something different. So within the world environment, um, every time you hit one of these dungeon locations, it might give you a different version of the dungeon. But a lot of times with these type of games, that procedurally generated dungeon gets generated when you create your character within the world the world gets created and crunched up and that's the world until you decide to try something else try another world try another character try something new or a mod comes out and you want to start the game over again uh so that's just my thoughts around that process basic squad management uh, all six combat trees will be available horse riding climbing you can see it here stage two the second major uh, game build will be fo focused on the multiplayer aspect so for me that's where i like to really look at a product now finding out game bugs is to me easy it's addressing game bugs that is specific to the multiplayer environment is a little tougher 
we're not talking about server management issues because that's out that's something different so when you do load testing let's say they they think their product can hold i'm just going to ballpark this let's say their product can hold 30 people comfortably in their environment and 30 people load in and you start seeing performance issues frame rate loss whatnot at that point it just tells the developer okay we either you've got to either address the the lagginess or, or do we just address the fact that our game only can really hold 20 people? And we, that is our benchmark. And when 20 people load on, maybe it's still crunching too much. And maybe they say, okay, let's knock it down to 12. And at 12 people, it plays nice. It's got a dedi- you've got your dedicated server. It's running in someone's background server. And 12 people can work on it without an issue. Now, the question at that point, the developer must ask themselves, is this 12 people enough? Now, to me, my thoughts is this probably is because of their balancing within this game is going to be for four to five people when people go tackle these dungeons. So I'm thinking that if they're thinking that the game uh, is balanced for four to five people, then 12 people should be plenty on the game world all at once, let's say. There's a lot of games when you have dedicated servers is, let's say 12 people log on, there's no more slots for anyone else, but five people log off. Well, five new people can then log on if that's what they want, if there's a spot available. And that's how normal dedicated servers work. So your your online population is capped at 12, for my example, but there are 100 people that actually live in the world because they get on at different times on that persistent server. So it's just not 12 people. It's more, more than that. And you're waiting for your spot to get in when you go to play. So, you know, that, you know, it depends on your game and how the developers manage that. But I think 12 people would be okay. I mean, I, what was Valheim? Was, what, 10? I, I mean, I'm not, you know, I don't recall the, the exact number, but it wasn't much. Stage 3, the last stage. Uh, we're going to be tra- training camp uh, storyline, access to zones. I'm just going to go over that real quickly because, I mean, we really don't need to look, honestly, as a play tester, as somebody who has kind of seen behind the curtain, I could read what stage three is what their hopes are. But in a lot of cases, this is a blueprint to what their best scenario is. So stage three, by the time we get to stage three, that could be a whole different kettle of fish because of what happened in stage one and two. So I'm glad the game's coming out. I'm glad we're going to be able to play test it. I don't see the button on the Steam page. I'm just scroll down here. Okay, so they're going on to say saved game. Since there is quite significant changes between different stages of the testing, it's recommended to start a new game save whenever you want to try a new stage of the build. The old saves will more likely still work without issue, but it's more reliable to make a fresh one. Well, this is my feeling on, on that is you consider if you're doing it for testing purposes if if tarkus is rolling in and i want to do some testing i would clean the game every single time so basically what i would call it is a refresh or when they went into stage two i would delete my save file altogether and i would start over and that is true i mean this is a is a edge of a knife kind of thing with that where if i'm starting over from scratch do i have enough time to push through this the second stage content before they're pushing in the third content so if my grinding purpose is let's say i need to get to 10th level right and it's easy to get to 10th level so deleting my save file is perfect because i delete the save file they do the new build stage two build they go in fresh character i get the 10th level again and then maybe the second stage is 10 more levels and I can comfortably get that done and still test the game but there's a lot of games that you can play that you can't really delete your save file because where you're at at stage one you kind of need to stay there so that could because there's so much content in stage two that to have to do those 10 levels then do the new content might be more not manageable you know what I mean so you got to kind of balance that as a tester I like starting over I got a lot of free time on my hand so I like starting from scratch because you never know what you might find as a bug that you would never have seen because you already had pushed past the content. So, for example, if you're level 10 and you're going to stage 2, you're not looking back to the the back levels because you're moving forward. 
and you might not see content. So by starting over, Fresh Slate, every time they do a build or do a, a major update, allows you as a tester to go through that content again and see if it got jammed up when they added the new stuff. I mean, it's just, it's just testing stuff. Okay, so it looks like they're ready to go on this. I'm looking forward to it now. I haven't really gone over the questions and answer bucket. There's been 46 new messages since I last checked their Discord server. My guess is it's going to be the same thing we've seen already, you know, the over the dedicated servers, the multiplayer aspect, which we're not going to see until stage two anyway, so you'll be able to get your feet wet. Uh, on stage one in the play test because there's not going to be anybody around to get you off track because a lot, a lot of times when I get in the multiplayer aspects of a play test, there'll be people that want my time. They'll be like, Tarkus, I'm over here trying to do this. I want to test this. Can you come do this? And Tarkus might be like wanting to get a crafting aspect tested, making sure crafting bags is work. But when it comes to multiplayer, Tarkus will leave what he's doing and go help somebody else test something that they're trying to test. And a lot of times those tests just turn into f fun playtime. You know, it's not really testing. It's just like, let's just play the fun out of this game. Well, the thing with Tarkus is I'm always thinking that if there's, let's say there's a thousand tasks in the game between crafting benches, making things, whatever. Tarkus wants to get his beak wet in every single aspect of that. So I'm not just going to pigeonhole myself to go see how the NPCs fight and then complain about the AI interaction. No, I might just briefly hit that, remember that the AI might be need to be a little polished, and then move on to something else because that's the, that's the core testing is you got to kind of move uh, all the blocks around and, and see how they interact with each other. All right, so let's just scroll down here. I saw there was a lot of biomes. They're going to have a few biomes. We discussed that in other videos. I'm just scrolling down here. So they're saying between the 20th and 27 October, just like we want to, okay, so that's some play test is what they're talking about there, which is, is really close. It's uh, the 27th now. Tomorrow will be the Discord channel update, uh, which we mentioned earlier that will detail about the testing. Now, this was yesterday. Uh, and then, for what I understand, the game is going to cost come out in 2024, is what the last question was. Well, I mean, that's it, folks. Really, I wanted to get your eyes back on this product to, to know that they're going into a test phase. Just scrolling through here real quick. This is a general chat. 50 new messages since the last time I was here. Just scrolling it quickly just to see if something jumps out at me that I should talk about or address. Okay, so they test, they posted all these uh, play test areas. Um, we'll request beta keys from Steam on Monday. It's about to take 24 hours to receive them. Okay, so we're in the play test chat. This channel, okay, approximately when we show it to beta test begin. Probably this weekend, we will request beta keys from Steam on Monday. So that's probably going to be a couple days before we're going to see these gems come out. But when they do, I will let you know on my channel. So Tarkus is not going to sit here like an idiot and try refreshing this page all night because it looks like we're looking at the keys for Monday. Uh, and today's Friday, right? I mean, today's Friday all day long. All right. Well, that's it, folks. That's my update of Ars Notoria. You got to be here to understand it. You got to help us play test this thing. I think it's going to be an amazing product when it gets into early access and beyond. I mean, it's got everything that I look forward to in a game. All right. Well, thank you for joining me. And this has been the Tarkus Zone.